There's a cat over here. There's a cat over there. And the wrong one died. And the wrong one died. Welcome to The Wrong Cat Died, the podcast breakdown of the cast astrophe. I'm your host, Mike Abrams, and today we are celebrating Andrew Lloyd Webber. With Phantom of the Opera set to close on Broadway, I'm having a handful of what I'm calling the Phantom Cats on the podcast. So today my guest has been form- performing in Phantom of the Opera, but before that she was Grizabella on the first European tour of Cats. So welcome, Janet Saya, and thank you for joining me. Thank you. So good to be here. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, excited to have you. I <laughs> love talking to Grizabellas because I, I also I love and I'm always worried because my entire podcast and thesis is like I don't think your character is deserving. Aww, um, boo. But it's always fun. I know, right? <laughs> um, but it's always fun because I think there's like you have such a close interpretation and can answer some of the stuff that's like unanswered right. with that and. I also like the fact that like this is a production I haven't talked to anybody from yet um, yes. with the first European tour. So let's start at the beginning. Okay. I, I always ask the my first question is usually to like newer cast members or people who are on the current tour. I'm like, what what did you think of the 98 movie or when did you first see it? But you predate that, um, <laughs> you know, so so what was like before you got cast in the show? <laughs> Were, how like how familiar were you with it, and did you get a chance to to see it ahead of time? Like, were you like where was that in your your theater kind of journey before you end up on that first tour? Oh my gosh, it it goes all the way back to when I was singing in my bedroom as a teenager. I used to listen to Barbara Streisand, and her version of Memory is what was in my head. And um, so that was my first introduction to Cats. I used to sing Barbara Streisand Memory in my bedroom. So the, her her beautiful rendition of that song was in my head naturally uh, when I went to the audition. Um, the day I went to the audition, I didn't want to go. It was in New York City, of course. <laughs> and I was dragged there by my buddy after we both got cut from the audition for Fiddler on the Roof. <laughs> and so she dragged me to this uh, dance call for Cats. European tour and I stood in the back I had the wrong shoes on I had like Fiddler on the Roof little lace up boots with a heel <laughs> and a little peasant dress <laughs> I was in the back row dancing and I'm I'm a dancer but I'm predominantly a singer actress and um I danced and did the best I could, and they called me back that right there, right then and there. And they said, "Do you know? Uh, do you sing Memory?" And I said, "Well, the Barbara Streisand version." And so I <laughs> belted it out, and I I strangely got the job. <laughs> so it was wow. uh, it was really bizarre how it happened. Um, but you so know. you knew you knew the the Barbara Streisand version of Memory, but had you had a chance to even see it, or was that just like a recording you had that you sang as a you know just a a great song to belt? Yeah, a great song to develop that I that I really connected to and um, loved to belt. And I mean, of course, I think they called me back and had me sing the you know Weber version. Um, yeah. But you know, it wasn't just <laughs> you're hired on the you know wasn't hired on the spot. But but totally, um, totally. I was I was you know called back and put through the ringer of course um but yeah so that's that was how i got it and uh and then it it started in um, longenthal switzerland so we we rehearsed for six weeks an absolutely incredible cast um we rehearsed and we learned the show in german and english and it took six Uh, weeks that was one of my questions for you was i you know again like i i've talked to some people who've done it in vienna and who've done it in hamburg and um, and learning in German just sounds crazy to me to, oh. to start with, but but you had to go back and forth on tour oh, between yeah. English and German depending on the, the the stop, right? Yes, and it was a good thing that I came from an opera background. I studied opera for about four years in the very beginning of my training, and so I had to study German. So um, in college, so you know, I was very familiar with the language. Um, and that that helped me quite a bit. So yeah, we wow. we uh, we had to switch back and forth. I think we sang it. Well, we went to Austria. So the tour um, hit all the major cities in Switzerland for one month each, which was absolutely just stunning. A month, a month in each city. So wow, um, Zurich, that's a long tour stop. Uh-huh, yeah, uh huh. It was Zurich and Basel and Langenthal and uh, Bregenz, um, Austria. 
Graz, Austria was absolutely my favorite, all-time favorite uh, stop there. And uh, in between uh, opening nights, I would take three or four days off and go tour, you know, Italy and surrounding areas. It was it was one of the just greatest moments of my career to do that tour as Grizz. Yeah, what a I mean, what a cool experience because I mean, such a beautiful country and like cool places to get to go. Yeah, to go see. Um, I want to go back. So you before you had your six weeks rehearsal. Had, had you seen the stage version at all? Like, did you see the Broadway version while you were in New York? Like, or were you learning it without having seen somebody else perform it? Yeah, no, I um, I don't actually remember when I saw it, but I, I do remember when I graduated from college, a good friend of mine whisked me off to the city and we saw like three shows in two days. And I think that's when I saw Cats. Um, so I knew, okay, so yeah, you, yeah, the Broadway version. You had at least seen... One one version. So you weren't going in cold. You weren't like no. trying to turn your fiddler hat off and you know <laughs> try to try to dance from from scratch. Like you had you had at least some yeah, idea had, of what's I had going on. I had a base okay. of, of knowledge. I saw the Broadway version. In fact, Richard Poole, who I perform with in Phantom, was in that Broadway version. So that's that's really funny. I'm looking at my program now, and he's in it. Um, an absolutely incredible performer, Richard Poole. And um, so, yeah, I, I had I had knowledge of what I was getting myself into. Wow. OK, that's um, yeah. There's a lot of Phantom to cast crossover, which is what mm-hmm. we have, you know, why, why we're here a little bit today. So we'll get to that part in a little a little bit. But um, uh, before that, I want to go back to the the rehearsal process. So mm-hmm. I am fascinated by, you know, you're you're obviously learning the, the song, and the dance and, you know, two different languages of doing it. But how much time do they put and spend going on tour into the backstories and the relationships and stuff like that? Like, what do you remember from that part of the rehearsal? I remember um, the director working with me individually, of course, you know, um, Mm -hmm. coming up and and telling me about Grizabella and how um, she's perceived by the other cats, um, sneered at and... Um, you know, they run away from her as she enters the stage because she's downtrodden and she's had a a, a, a life that is, um, you know, wild, <laughs> wild, mm-hmm. full of glitz and, uh, you know, ups and downs and the hard life and the crazy life and waking up in all kinds of bars, uh, you know, so she was she was a, a, a great star and the director would, you know, feed me these things in quiet and in, in, in quietly in my ear as the other cats were doing their rehearsing and I would go back you know especially with that first moment where Grizabella comes out on the stage and she's trying to go through the motions of her dance that she once used to do but her body's falling apart and she's just a hot mess <laughs> so mm-hmm. so yeah he would you know he would try to help me have the relationship with the other cats where I'm like saying Hey, you know, this is what I used to be. Give me, give me a chance. I, I'm, I'm worthy to be picked to go to the heavy side layer. I'm, I'm the most needy because I've struggled and had such a hard life. You know. Mm-hmm. So, so, so I do. I've, I've heard some really interesting things about that, like the rehearsal process with Grizabella, mm-hmm. because it's almost like you're pulled out and separated intentionally to kind of create some of that. Not animosity, but like the like that you're shunned early on, and then you're yeah. accepted later, and so that is like that is kind of being built in by the way they're they're doing that. How does that relate on tour? When I guess your tour was was if, if you were doing a month at a time, you were a little bit more stable. But I've always found it fascinating that like it takes almost a, a, a deep level of acting because I'm sure you become really close with your your castmates as you're traveling around. Oh you know, yeah, multiple countries with them, and they have to then every night go out and pretend to hate you at first, and then and then embrace you. <laughs> yeah. So like, what is that? What is that like to kind of go? And I mean, is it the you put your makeup on and you you kind of get into character and mode, and and that's that's the acting piece, or is it really pretty challenging having these like deep relationships with all these people, and then have to go and almost you know have this like dark moment before that that happens. Yeah. Well, it's kind of built into the structure of the show. I mean, in the very beginning, we're all dancing Jellicle Cats together. And I'm not Grizabella. I'm like a younger Grizabella. And I'm back mm-hmm. in the back row dancing with everyone. And and then 
I have a lot of time to myself because I'm not in all those numbers. And so I kind of go off and wander the halls and watch them from the sidelines, which is probably what Grizabella, the cat, would do anyway. She's not able yeah. to join yeah. in the fun. So she's kind of on the sidelines looking in, but thinking to herself, well, I once used to be able to do that and I was the best, you know, or something. So I would, I would, you know, hang out backstage and... Um, Watch the show, and um, and then I would I would get my huge fur coat on, and as you put on a costume, you slowly you know come into that character, and you're putting on that makeup, and your mascara is just dripping down your face, and your rip is your lip is torn, and you you yeah you get into the character, and that wig oh I had the most fantastic wig, it's just tattered and torn in all different levels, and standing up at the ears, and and it you know you really do become um, that forlorn, um, desperate animal um, mm-hmm. that's ripped and torn. And, and uh, you hobble yourself onto stage and you see them all staring at you and you sneer back and, you know, try to let them know that you're worthy and that, uh, you know, you want to be included with them, even though you've had a downturn. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's um, it was always exciting to me. But one of the things, um, one of my best friends that I'm still friends with today was Victoria the White Cat. And um, she she was the one that we hung out a lot and uh, toured around and partied and did fun things with. So I was always really connected to her in particular. And we're still friends today. She lives in Scotland. So, that yeah. is That's awesome. I, I think there's a lot of question about the Victoria Grisabelle relationship. And so having like one of your best friends doing that, did you play that as mother, as mother daughter? Like what was, or were you told anything about that relationship? Um, I can't remember. It was so long ago. Um, I mean, she, she's the innocent one. She's the fresh one. And I'm, I'm the wretched old glamour yeah. queen. So the opposite there of this beautiful, pure, innocent being and, you know, the person who's been through it all and has so many stories to tell. I, I really feel that I have a lot to tell Victoria about being a cat and what to watch out for. And so um, in the end, when she is the one who chooses me and touches my outreached hand, that's just such a special and beautiful moment. It's like a magical moment where, you know, I am revealed as the one, the chosen one. Mm-hmm. And and mm-hmm. so, but in my opinion, I think that Victoria should go with me up to the heavy side layer. Ooh. That's okay. what I feel like, and maybe I'm ahead of myself here, but <laughs> that's what I. Yeah, we're. I want. I want to put a pause on that because I'm. I got a lot of follow up questions for that, and that is my final question for you. So okay. I really like where we're going to go with that. So we will come back to that. Okay. Um, so I, I, I. It's interesting to hear that. Like it was. I love that it's almost like there's some times when I'm like thinking about the show and I've probably thought with the junkyard and some of the super fans way more in detail about this than, than, than most people, including people <laughs> performing it. Um, but there is like a, a population that believes that Victoria was abandoned by Grizabella and is now mom. And that's why there's a connection coming back. And then there's also a, a faction that believes that, that Victoria is, could become the next Grizabella if she's not careful. And Grizabella is like the, role model to tell her not to do that. And so it's right. like, there's almost a split between that. And so it's interesting to hear. And then also hearing that, you know, you're just, you're good friends with the Victoria off stage, like how to play that, that connection as either the, the peer, does that ever drift off stage? Like when you're having the, like, I'm the role model, when you were out, you know, living it up in, in Switzerland, where, where you're like, okay, <laughs> I made that mistake. You don't go make that mistake. And when you're out at the bars, it, you just, separate life and work? <laughs> um, it probably, I mean, separate life and work, you know, I mean, I wasn't, okay. I wasn't a mom at the time um, when I did Grizabella. I'm a mom now, but um, yeah, I, I, I would let people just do whatever they want and be wild and have fun. And um, yeah, I, I pretty much, I mean, 
When I was on tour, though, my sister Sherry came out, and she was pretty wild, so I did have to rein her in a bit. <laughs> yeah. We ran you off to, and did some pretty fun the, things. Well, yeah, I love it. The, well, the, the end Grizabella, not the, not the beginning Grizabella, is, is what you're, you're bringing in. Um, I want to go back to a piece on the, you know, the, the performance that you said, you know, you kind of stand off to the side. I, Grizabella has, at least from what I've been told, about 15 minutes on stage. And mm-hmm. so as a performer in a show that has, you know, most of the other cats are on almost, almost the entire time. How is it, um, like, how do you prepare to get across such a powerful moment, a powerful piece in a short window of time? Like, how do you prep for that every night to know that, like, I've got this extreme, you know, I got a bell, I've got this great number, I've got to really tell a huge part of the story in a shorter window. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it requires a lot of prep before you head out there. Um, I'm in, I'm a very physical person. Like I said, I'm a dan- I was a dancer. And so getting into the physicality of it, um, you know, making sure your costume's on in time and, and doing some of the motion of the cat before you get on stage, um, like connecting to your body is really important so that you come on already fully in character and mm-hmm. and fully in in the the memory and the backstory of of what you know you've gone through in life how you've how you've been abused and or remembering your great moments when you were a star and just kind of living in the world of your memories i mean that's what the song is about let the memory live again and so you're she's wrapped up in her memories of how great she was and she thinks she can go out there and do it again um by reliving that memory and telling others to live the memory then that's how you find happiness so mm-hmm, Grizabella mm-hmm. trying to find happiness by living, reliving her memory. That's kind of how I would get into the character there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's interesting that you're kind of off stage, kind of trying to almost mimic the motions that way when you walk on, you're fully ready to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And actors uh, also are good at just switching it on. You can just, when you've trained and trained and spent your life doing it, you just, you know, you're standing there as Janet, and then next thing you know, boom, you just, you just, you, you only have to say one sentence or, or put your mind back into one image or memory, and then you're, you're in it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's, it's, as someone not, again, not at all in, in the world, it is like a, it's, it's your profession and a skill and stuff mm-hmm. that, that you all have trained for for your entire life to be able to do that. And then I do think in cats too, you, you kind of, you put on, the you know the the leotard and the makeup and the jacket so it's even almost a little bit more like you're really in character by mm-hmm. the time you kind of go out there um different than maybe fiddler you know or some of the other things where you're you know slightly in costume but not nearly as like like you really have to get in costume and cats oh yeah oh yeah i'm looking at i have a a, a painting of the makeup uh, that I had to put on every night. That was a big part of the job, definitely. Mm-hmm. You know, getting your face all duded up. Yeah. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about other character relationships. Um, did you think, like, Victoria is like a very big one. There's also some potential theories about Bomb Ballerina and Demeter. There's also, you know, with any of the, the maybe the older male cats of like the past relationships or if you're in McCavity's crime gang, like, what? What were the things that you thought about when you were kind of going on tour to help kind of create that arc of of the memories that you're reliving? Like, did you think about the the Jellicle family when you kind of had that? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, it's like a big reunion when we all come together on stage. And so I don't know, you know, maybe I haven't seen these cats in a long time. And uh, there's some memories from rum tum tugger that maybe i want to relive or not relive so um (laughs) he's such a wild fun cat i'm sure there was some something going on with them i don't know i don't remember exactly the relationships like between those cats um bustifer jones and growl tiger i mean yeah i i think that maybe the kittens i don't know could have been kittens that i birthed for sure (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, Bomb Ballerina, I was friends with her too, uh, Joni um, McDonald. She was incredible. And, um, but I don't remember the relationship I had with her in terms of, you know, our onstage characters. Um, yeah, I, I, I realize I, I'm asking you to, 
to go back 20, 20 years of, of memory of a backstory that's not spoken on stage to be like, yeah, this is exactly <laughs> right. how I did it. Um, yeah. I can tell you a couple that, that I think are not ne- maybe necessarily the like a hundred percent, but definitely ones that are thought about a lot. So I think one is, is obviously the Victoria, which we'll get to, cause I know that I like, I, I love where you're going of bringing her with you. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but there was the potentially being bomb's mother or like you were her role model growing up and like aunt or something. And, and that was almost the fear of that. She could also go down that path if she's not careful yeah. um, because of her relationship with McCavity. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely am like the grandmother, like telling people, look at me, even though I've gone the wrong path, still, I hold my dignity together, you know? Mm -hmm. So I keep myself from falling apart. So I'm kind of saying to them, yeah, you know, uh, be careful, watch out because this is what you'll turn into, but still I'm holding myself together. Um, and, um, I mean, the kittens, you know, I have to be nice to them. Um, and I see Cassandra. Cassandra is the um, Siamese cat. And I mean, she's so gorgeous. Um, but someday still she could be like me. So mm-hmm. I have to show her it's not all youth and glamour and attitude. You know, she's she could be doomed, too. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Did you did you ever think about where Grizabella went when she left? Like, you know, the, the story arc is she left and, you know, we're getting the very end of that. She's coming back to be re, you know, um, reunited with the family and, re, and accepted by the family. Where did where does she go? Like, is she part of McCavity's crime gang? Does she leave the Jellicles for drugs and sex and all kinds of stuff? Like what what is have, did you even think about that? Or was it more of like you just kind of came back to this is where I'm returning? Yeah, um, you know, she probably went back to her cave somewhere and I don't know. I don't know where, you know, I don't know where she would have hit out, but she's been in so many bars and places all over, you know, the town that she probably just hung out in her regular, you know, haunt. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I love it. That's such, that's such a much a much more wholesome version than what I what I think like I have written for for Grizabella on, on her way out. You know, I feel like she's I I picture the like uh, you know a very wild go off and do all kinds of crazy stuff, you know, sex, drugs, all the stuff in between, and going everywhere to where you're on like the the most insane bender, almost like Hangover style bender, <laughs> um, and then is now like okay. Time, time, like time to get back here and, and yeah, have my I mean, redemption arc. Digging herself out of a black hole that she's been in for so many years, I'm sure, or something like that. Or, hey, maybe just wild and crazy fun. Um, but then once it takes a toll on her little body, she's like, oh, God, how am I going to get out of this and come back to the fam or the, the group or the tribe? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it's like the superstar that kind of falls off the deep end for a little bit, you know, like mm-hmm. makes it makes the break as the, the star from the family that got out. Yeah. But made it too big. And then it's coming back. And to, now she to wants her comeback and she's trying to get yeah. her, her last, you know, moment. Um, mm-hmm. And she gets it. So, yeah, <laughs> she does. She, she does. Um, were there any other like any other things that you remember from the tour or the like, especially the backstories where you're just like, oh, we definitely thought about this, but that's not really set on stage. Like, was there any unique moments to your your tour that you. It's like, again, this is a tour that's not as documented because it's, you know, it predates most of the Internet age type of, you know, where you know, like now everything is word for word documented and on social media and everything. But like, what were some of the parts that you remember from your from your group and from that that tour that was like unique to your tour? Um, I mean, let me think. Monka Strap, Monka Strap. Um, I remember Monka Strap just being really strong he's like the narrator for the piece and i remember Mm -hmm. him being like in charge of everybody and um but he would bar me from entering the stage and i would just tell him you know i had the authority over him more um to to get to push him away and say no you're not going to block me i'm 
I'm the great Grizabella, you know. So mm-hmm. I remember some of the relationships with him. And um, it's so hard to remember all the way back. Ah, uh, no big deal. Okay. Yeah, no, I think it's 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 part of the like the the fun of of doing this is it's been on for so long and been running for so long that there's there is just like endless stories from this and um and versions and interpretations and, mm-hmm. and everything else. Um, I want to hear a little bit like you, I think you mentioned, but I want to hear where were your favorite tour stops? Like you know, in the, in the European tour, as someone you know not from there and going over, like, where were your your favorite places to um, to stop during that tour? Um. I would say Geneva. Geneva was incredible. Geneva. Um, people would lay out on the piers in the sun in the summer. We were there in the summer, so people would just lay out on the piers, like in the city. It wasn't even a beach or anything. They just have a pier that went out into the the lake and uh, grass, and everybody was just out there as if it was a beach. And even some people were topless, and that was one of the things that I was like, "Whoa!" Right here in the city, <laughs> you know, that was yeah. pretty wild. Um, I loved what I loved most about Switzerland was just walking along these beautiful river walks and of course in Langenthal um, just the mountains and you know I'd go off to the Zermatt the city of Zermatt where they have mm-hmm. um, the Matterhorn Mountain which is like if you go to Disney they've got the yeah. Matterhorn that mount I couldn't ski because I was in a show but um, I just oh that was so incredible to, yeah, to be I could, I can't on the top of the Grisabella. Matterhorn yeah Isabella having a ski injury here and you can't <laughs> perform the next day but yeah it's I've I've been there. It's one of the most beautiful towns I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. And then I have a really, really, really special memory from Graz, Austria, because my father, who I adore, um, he's the reason I'm on stage today. He um, decided to come out and see me in Graz, Austria. And I said, OK, get yourself out there. I'll be rehearsing at the Graz Opera House. So wait till I'm done with my rehearsal and then I'll see you at the hotel. And so I'm in there rehearsing. I'm singing memory um, and I look up. And who is in the balcony seat all the way from San Francisco, (laughs) California, but my father sitting up there in the balcony right in the middle of of me singing memory in rehearsal. So that was like, just how did he get all the way to the opera house without my telling him? And that was just a really magical moment for me to have him there. What a cool experience. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just beautiful. Amazing. Um, I hope you're having a jellical ball. We'll be right back after this quick break. Okay, let's let's pivot. I want to talk a little bit about Phantom. Um, I've I've kind of find this as fascinating because it's you know they're two Andrew Rubber shows, but they couldn't be more different. So oh. I, I would love to hear a little bit about like your not necessarily transition, but you know you you you've done both. Like how tell me a little bit about kind of your your current getting to into Phantom and kind of being part of it, and then how you kind of have the the similarities and differences between these two Andrew Lloyd Webber shows. Yeah. um, Well, I got into Phantom, um, strangely, from a Cats audition. (laughs) I I was back in New York and uh, I went to a Cats audition as a dancer um, and I got cut because I I did the wrong hands or something. I did Phantom hands when I'm supposed to be doing Cats hands. And as I walked out the door in walked Kristen Blodgett and um, she said, Janet, what are you doing at the dance call? You're a singer. I said, oh, yeah, well, I love to dance. And so she said, we'll stay because you can sing. So um, she got she she hired me to play yet another cat, Jenny Any Dots, in the Westchester Dinner Theater version of Cats that she was working on. And I did that. And while we were working in that, um, she called me to the side one day and said, come in this uh, studio here. I want to hear you sing. Um, and uh, we worked together just on some other music. And then a, a day later, she called and said, hey, do you have a high E? And I said, well, I've been belting out cats, um, but yeah, give me a couple days and I'll belt a hi-e. She said, well, we need a swing at Phantom on Broadway. I said, oh, great. Okay. So uh, I worked up my high operatic E and uh, she called me in and uh, put on a a diva suit and sang Carlotta notes. Um, And I got hired to be the swing. 
Um, that is and my, amazing. That was my first uh, Broadway job, and uh, boy, did I work hard for that. It, it took me a long time to get on Broadway, but uh, it was just so exciting when I finally got that contract and walked to the Majestic Theater, which I absolutely adore, uh, for the very first time after wandering around Times Square um, in my 20s, you know, just saying, when is it going to be my turn? When? I know I'm going to work in one of these theaters one day, um, but to finally get um, my own theater, um, The Majestic, which strangely I had been in to see my first Broadway show, which is 42nd Street, when I was a teenager. So, um, wow. Yeah. Kind of, kind of interesting, wow. right? Yeah. Full, I came full circle, full circle, 42nd Street I, in the house. And now I'm on the stage. <laughs> the Majestic. Can we just quickly talk that you just like casually threw in that you did a Jenny Annie Dots dinner theater production. <laughs> Yes, yes. I remember slipping on potato skins as I was tap dancing as Jenny Any Dots. <laughs> yeah, Just, no. Yeah, so that was after the the tour, right? After so the tour, you came... right. After the tour. Um, and actually, it was after I did the tour of Phantom, too. Um, so after the, mm-hmm. the Phantom tour, that's when I auditioned for the Cats at Westchester. And um, uh-huh. yeah. Yep, Cats uh, Westchester. So fun. Okay, so you did Cats Westchester, Jenny Andy Dodds, tap number. Tap number with all the little mice and the big, huge fat yeah. suit, and then rip it off and put on your, your fringe tap dance suit. That was fun, too. But it was in the middle of that when Kristen took me out and put me in Phantom Broadway. So, boy, am wow. I grateful for that Jenny Andy Dodds chance. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and again, it's such a an interesting parallel um, of the... Again, same a lot of the same people working because it's you know two Kristen, two of his yeah. shows, yeah. And so it's, it's it's so I've heard the reverse too that you know someone um, ended up in in Cats because of a Phantom, um, you know. And there's there's a lot of that back and forth. Yeah. Well, I'm an Angela Lloyd Webber girl. I mean, Evita is the reason why I switched from opera training. I was going to be an opera singer and I switched to uh, musical theater when I was at San Francisco State University because I saw Evita and I said, that's what I want to do. I can do that. Um, and I was in Evita in college, but um, never the not Broadway version. So yeah, I've mm-hmm. actually been in, in associated with Angela Lloyd Webber in three of his shows. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's um, let's go to some rapid fire because I want to get to the you know the most important question here, and I've got a lot of follow ups now because you've already teased your answer. Um, mm-hmm. But let's start with if you could go on as uh, any cat, ignoring male, female, singer, dancer, or whatever, um, who would you want to play for just one night? Which track? Oh my gosh, it would definitely be Bombi. Bomb. I always, I, I used to, when I was in the show, I used to look at Bombi and be like, "Oh, she's swinging." <laughs> she's, yeah. yeah, I would definitely, love I would it. definitely want to want to be that fierce girl. And I love to um, to watch um, Joni McDonald in our company do it, and just be like, "Oh man, I should really be playing that part." <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah, it. she's awesome. Uh, who are <clears throat> your favorite and least favorite cats? Um. You know, I really didn't like the number peaks and pollicles. That that was my least favorite uh, cat. Sorry to say, um, and my favorite cat, aside from Grizz, of course, is probably Mistopheles, Um, because I was just thrilled, thrilled at that dance number and watching him do those um, Chenet turns. I think that's what they're called. Yeah, the the uh, no, not Chenet. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 yeah, I can't person. be on I, you. I know, I know what you're I know. talking about. I'm, yeah, the uh, the turns that he does at the, the end there, are like yeah, twenty the, or yeah. thirty of those um, jeté turns or whatever. No, not jeté turns. I can't remember the ballet term, but um, <clears throat> that was just a magical. And the guy we had yeah. was amazing. So yeah, yeah, that was. What is your favorite song from the show? Um, McCavity and and Memory, of course. I love McCavity. Mm-hmm. McCavity is I, just so much fun. Yeah, and it goes back to your bomb, you know, your bomb, bomby kind of piece. So. Yeah. Um, I love my, my, here's my Phantom crossover. If if you had, if one cat was going to haunt a theater, who do you think would be best at it? If one cat was going to haunt um, the Winter like, Garden? If he was going to be the... Any theater, yeah. If he's going to come back and be like the you know the the Phantom of the Opera kind of haunting, um, who, which cat do you think would be able to be the best one to do that? 
Ooh, which cat would haunt the theater? Well, probably Growl Tiger because he was Ooh. such he was such a um, a theater like. Mm -hmm. old time lover of the theater like he was built into the the you know he just it's like he was born in the theater <laughs> he was meant to be i yeah, yeah that's I, a really good answer i hadn't thought about him because i most of my knowledge is from the more recent production where he's not in it um i mean i'm talking so about gus gus great, Growl. Yeah, yeah, gus, yeah yeah gus growl tiger yeah yeah but yeah but the growl tiger but to that like that little insert of the performance is very yeah that's a great answer mm -hmm. I, 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 he probably, I, haven't thought, I hadn't thought that i love it yeah really i guess i'm saying that because the the gus that i perform with um in europe he gave me his amazing robe we all wear robes backstage and when i left the show a little bit early i left after one year um he gave me his robe and i took that robe and i wore it at phantom for my first year there <laughs> Which is, wow. which is interesting. So I, I already feel like Gus is haunting the Majestic Theater because his yeah. robe is there. <laughs> We've got a lot That's of extra so robes fun. laying around the theater. Whenever I see his robe, I think, oh, Gus is here. <laughs> well, I love that. Um, okay, so million dollar question, and you kind of teased your answer a little bit, but I have argued that I actually don't think jo uh, Grisabella should be the Jellicle choice. Um, so I want you to either defend Grizabella or give a different theory. I love, I would love to hear the theory of that Victoria is coming with you, or do you think a different cat should be picked or what is your interpretation of this? Well, we're all going out and telling our stories and, and, you know, saying why we, we need to be, um, chosen to go beyond, but I, I, I will stick with Grizabella and I will stick with that because she's saying touch me it's so easy to leave me in in these dark times um if you touch me you'll understand what happiness is so she's inviting all of them to know happiness and um i love that about her and so as she reaches her little hand back asking for someone to choose her and they do i just feel like she's saying choose me and we'll all be happy you know and mm -hmm. and so victoria is the one that that dips her little paw into mine and um and chooses me to go up so i think that you know just like in ancient times when somebody would be buried and they would bury their cat with them in the tomb to go with them up to the heavy side layer to heaven or wherever beyond they would go i think that victoria should go with grizz as her companion in the afterlife and the two of them should ascend you know whether you think it's mother and daughter or or uh any other um downtrodden and innocent they both should go up together and i i, I love the thought there yeah. that you've got two like you're they're gonna go together you're gonna a have companion. like it's a, a companion to go with you is in that like i th i've always kind of thought it's a little bit is about being reborn mm -hmm. and that you know like grisbell's gonna go up and then potentially come right back as kind of like a new reborn fresh yeah. life so i like that you're, it's like all right we're both gonna go together and we're both gonna start fresh together right right is this is this part of this does this go back to the fact that you and the victoria were really good friends and it's like all right we're gonna celebrate together we're gonna go up there together and then we're gonna come <laughs> back together because we've been going out to every night together yeah yeah i mean we have been friends all these years so she ha she did m move on from the show with me so maybe that does have something to do with it that hey i left the show but i took a friend along the the, the future journey with me yeah <laughs> I, I love it. I, I do think so much of the interpretations stem from like the actor relationships, like the outside of the, the theater relationships. And so it's, it's cool to hear a different one like that. Cause it's something I hadn't like, you know, if I take two people out of it, I hadn't thought about Victoria ever going up with, with Grizabelle or, or, you know, the two cats I had always joked to go together would be, you know, Tugger and Mistopheles together, or like some, mm -hmm. you know, some version of a different pairing, but right. um, but yeah, this uh, that's a or, fun it's a fun answer. Yeah, or Demeter and Bombi 
would they go together? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I mean, definitely they're, they're Gus of... and, and Jelly Lorem, they would definitely Jelly, go together. Yeah there's, yeah, there's a lot of versions of that now. So now I've thought of like, okay, now there's a lot of ways of how do we like – this is changing the the jellical choice every year to right. not just one cat. We're going to pick two every year now. Two cats, um, right? We'll have to two cats contact Trevor Nunn and have him. <laughs> he's good. Yeah. At, he's good at changing things up and solving problems that are, other people wouldn't think of. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, well, this has been super fun. Um, how can people stay in touch? This is going to come out, you know, like right around the end of the um, Phantom closing. So, how can people stay in touch with you? Uh, on my website, JanetSia.com. Awesome. Yeah. Website, we'll, we'll link it and um, so people can, can stay in touch and all the lovely things you're working on. Great. It's been well, so well, fun. Thank you thank so you. much for coming on. Yeah. It was a all blast right. to have you and hear all the stories. It's and, been great um, thinking thank you back on all the memories. My pleasure. Yeah. Awesome. And thanks everyone else for listening to this episode of The Wrong Cat Died, the podcast breakdown of the cast catastrophe. To follow along, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or anywhere else to listen to podcasts. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at The Wrong Cat Died, or check out our website, theroncatdied.com. Thank you.